The Unfiltered by Jade. Jade. Welcome to The Unfiltered by Jade, where we educate, empower, and entertain. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, download, donate, and make everybody know who this. Beats by RB Records. Shopping assistance, your style, your budget. Our services include online and local shopping for individuals and businesses, personal shopping, purchasing of company and office supplies, importing and exporting small packages across Jamaica and worldwide, and helping you find unique gifts and items for all events and occasions. Contact us at 876-919-5195 or shopping assistance 2015 at gmail.com shopping assistance your style your budget welcome to the unfiltered by jade today we have with us here pastor paul a blake pastor blake is an author a blogger a pastor life coach marriage counselor and publisher Today, we're going to be speaking about healing broken hearts, being present for those in need. Hi, Pastor Blake. I am happy to be here with you, Jade. Happy to be on this yes, platform. Um, Always happy to share. Yes, yes, yes. Happy to be here and hear what you have to say to our audience today. Yes, God bless. God, God is good all the time. All the time, all the time. What I want us to talk about first is what does it mean to truly be present for someone going through a difficult time or experiencing heartbreak well you know truly truly being present for someone who is going through difficulty really means to be to give them your full attention to be empathetic towards what they are going through and to be able to support them without judgment or distraction I believe it involves what, what I use in counseling called active listening. You know, many of us, many of us hear, but we don't listen very well. <laughs> it is, it is, it is acknowledging how they feel and validating their experiences, not trying to trivialize their experiences, even if it doesn't make sense to us. You know, being present means to be emotionally available and showing concern and you know being being willing to comfort and to assist in any way in any way that we can being willing to comfort and assist in any way that we can yes yes with that being said comforting is also not giving solutions for things N not necessarily um you, the, the idea of being present is, is is also very comforting and i'll give you an example mm -hmm. in in the book of job um chapter two when Job was going through his crisis and his friends came and the, the Bible says that they, they sat with him for seven days. Mm -hmm. And, and I believe that that was a source of comfort for Job. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just the idea that they were there being present with him, not saying anything mm -hmm. was something that I believe would have lessened the turmoil that he was facing. And mm -hmm. interestingly, the first time they opened their mouth, Job's, Job's world fell apart. Yes. Mm -hmm. The people that were there to comfort him. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, it's, it's really about being present. It's not necessarily about what we have to say, but just awesome. about being present. How do we balance offering support and giving someone space to process their emotions independently? Oh, wow. No, that's an interesting question. <laughs> mm -hmm. Balancing offering support and giving persons the space to, to process their emotions, it, it, it really requires a level of sensitivity yes. and understanding of the situation that the, person, the, the people are going through. Mm -hmm. And as, as I said before, understanding does not necessarily mean that you have to understand the extent of the situation or fully understand exactly what they are going through 
-hmm. Because even those of us who are going through crisis at the best of times can't even explain what we are going through. Sure. <laughs> but there's somebody who is 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 present. So it's, it's really being able to have a, a level of sensitivity and being able to communicate openly and honestly. And I, I think that, that is something that we lack many times because when persons are going through crisis, a lot of times we think that our first duty is really to solve, give them an, a, a, a solution for the crisis. Right. And that, that, that's not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes the best comfort that we can even offer persons is really to tell them honestly that we don't really understand fully That's what right. they're going through be mm -hmm. just being open and being very honest and asking them also if they want space yes so asking uh, you know one of, one of the things that we often miss when persons are going through crisis we don't ask what kind of support they need we offer the support uh, that we think they need mm -hmm. <laughs> and most of the times what we do is give advice instead of just asking what we want. Exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes, you know, I and this is something that I deal with every single day. Even even sometimes in my counseling office, when somebody comes for counseling, um, a lot of times they come just to be in the presence of a counselor, somebody who understands. I've had situations where I've had to allow a client to sit in my office for an entire hour or two, not Sometimes. saying anything at all. Mm -hmm. And ju just the fact that there is somebody there who is empathetic to their situation, who can offer a level of sensitivity, then it, it it helps them. And another thing that we should do also is to respect their boundaries that, that these people set. You know, yes. when, when persons are going through crisis, whether we like it or not, they, are, they have boundaries that they have set. And those of us who are offering care should also respect the boundaries that they set and allow them to guide us through the level of inv involvement that they desire from us. Yes, I agree. How can we shop for friends or loved ones who may hesitate to seek support or express their emotions openly? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, to show up for, for friends and loved ones, really, one, they may, uh, they may hesitate to offer, uh, you know, to seek support or even to express their 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 feelings emotionally but i i think that one of the things that is important is that those of us who are offering care should create that safe space mm. and that that environment of non-judgment where they can feel as if they can open up to us because uh one of the things about persons in crisis people will open up if they feel safe Yes. That's one. That's one of the driving factors of persons who are going through, through turmoil, through crisis, and whatever. They, they, you know, they need to feel that they have a they have a safe space. We need to let them yes. know that, you know, we are we are there for them. We are ready, ready to talk when whenever they are ready to discuss their feelings, mm -hmm. to let them know that their feelings are valid and and that we are, are able to respect their feelings. We must be patient, we must be gentle, we must be understanding, and we must also, I believe, avoid pressuring them to open up before they are ready, uh -huh. because I think that's another thing that we often fall short on. Uh, and one, I'd also say that persons who are offering care, that it is not an opportunity to know somebody's business. Right. Right. Yes, mm -hmm. You are you you are a source of help and encouragement. Yes. yes. And so it, it it should not become an, an inquisition. It should not become a source of gossip. Right. If if at all we have that kind of intention in offering care, then uh we will not be very effective caregivers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So don't go and be proving them about what's happening. No. If they don't want to talk and if they just want to sit in silence, sit in silence with them. That's it. I, and, and as I said, and it is not always awkward. Don't it doesn't it awkward. have to. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to make sense to us. <laughs> can Can you discuss the importance of setting boundaries when supporting someone during challenging periods? Wow, well, um, so, you know, setting these boundaries when we are supporting persons who are going through difficult periods, then it is also important for us to safeguard our well-being and our own right. emotional health mm. and and as I, I as a counselor i can speak directly to this because 
one of the one of the things that I was taught in counseling from a very early, um, you know, very early in my in my in my ministry, is that I sh must avoid internalizing people's problems, uh, and that's this is where compartmentalization comes in. Where when whenever whenever I leave my office, you know, I leave my I leave whatever happens in the office in the office because I have to also understand that when I come home, I have a family to take care of. Yes, and yes. I can't, I can't carry the, the 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 problems of the office to my home because it's going to affect my family. Yes, it's also going to affect my my own. You know, can you imagine if you are not a, a caregiver who is able to compartmentalize things? Right. you are going to take on every single person's problem along with yours, and oh. then eventually, what will happen? You will have burnout, or you can even have resentment. Mm -hmm. So. It is it I think what 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 is necessary also is to give to have a system, a support system. Right? Yes. You when when you're not able to navigate situations, you have to also have somebody to to bounce off. Not not to discuss the people's problems, but right. discuss your own emotional state. You have to persons have to be encouraged to do that kind of thing. And it's a form of self-care. And it, it is it is a form of self-care. Unfortunately, Jade, counselors and caregivers don't make very good clients. <laughs> yes. Because the I truth is, they are oftentimes the last person to seek help for their mental state and emotional state. Yeah. And so yeah. we have to, you have, we have to set those kind of boundaries from very, from very early, because it does, it does affect us over time. And and all that you have to do is look at Jesus in Jesus' own ministry. When you look at Jesus in the book of Luke and the book of Mark, when um Jesus dealt with people's problems on an on an everyday, everyday basis, that was part of who he was, that was part of his humanity. Mm -hmm. But there are several instances that is recorded in the scriptures when Jesus took time away from the crowd. Yes, yes, he did. And went over into the hills. Mm. And yeah, and his support system, Matthew, Mark, and John was always with him. Mm -hmm. so, so if Jesus, if Jesus saw the need for a support system, then Aye. we also should see the need for a support system. That's a sermon right there, no pastor. <laughs> <laughs> right there, it is because if Jesus saw the need for it, why yes. is it that we believe that we can take on everybody's burden without? Exactly, it, it has, it has, it has, it has repercussions and and very serious implications. I, I know I know several caregivers who don't enjoy a good family life and but yet they are very good caregivers to other persons. But oh. we can't care for others and not care for our families also. So we very have to true. set boundaries. Because our family is a first priority and that's good because that's right. That's right. What role does nonverbal communication such as body language and gestures play in conveying empathy and support to someone in need? So um body language uh gestures you know it, it plays it plays a very very significant role in um conveying empathy and support to persons who are going through crisis and i can always look at it from a from a cultural perspective from especially from somebody who lives in the caribbean Mm -hmm. And this is something that is is very synonymous right uh, right throughout the Caribbean is that we are very expressive persons. Yes. When we are going through crisis as a Caribbean person, everybody knows just by looking at how at how we function, you know, our body language, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or we or we gesture, and mm -hmm. so it, it really does play an, an important an important role. Our facial expressions. Oh, you know, yeah. I know that that is something that is right throughout the Caribbean. We can look at somebody's face and know whether you're happy, whether you're sad, whether you're mad. And as a matter of fact, they are, our face actually portrays levels of, of emotions. Yes, it does. Yes, it <laughs> so, does. So, so simple acts like maintaining eye contact, nodding mm -hmm. in understanding, right. and offering... Um, a comforting touch can communicate care and compassion we, you don't, without using words, uh -huh. right? And so we, so as as caregivers, we we need to pay close attention to people's body body language as we as we deal with them because our body language oftentimes 
gives us it gives gives us insight to the, the emotional state that the persons we are trying to care for oh, are, wow. are going through and it is looking at the body language many times that allows us to respond in an appropriate way right so as caribbean people nonverbal communication is is something that is very very big it, again using using the scriptures in mark in mark chapter 2 that, that story from mark chapter 2 verse 1 through 12 when jesus um, in healing the man who was paralyzed and uh, was lowered lowered through the roof but jesus not not only does verbally reassures him but if you if you read through the text jesus also offers him some non-verbal cues he touched mm -hmm. him and he yep. looked into his eyes to convey mm -hmm. empathy and support that he had for him right. and so this the non-verbal communication cannot be absent from caring hmm. i love that and one thing also that we're not to let pass us by is even though nonverbal is important and we express it freely, we're also supposed to be careful of how we express it. Exactly. Uh, yes, and yeah, that, yeah. that cannot be emphasized enough. We, we yes. and, and again, if, if you look at, again, from a cultural perspective, our body language carries different messages. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and these messages can be read loud and clear really? and so we we have to be very careful how we use we use body language and even how we interpret body language mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so even for facial expression even for facial even expression if it is that, even if it is that we yes. don't agree with what somebody is saying or it's not something that you know we align with our facial expression should not show that because exactly it allows right. the client to shut down or to open up and speak. Exactly, exactly. So if you want to create a safe space, yes, we're supposed to learn something called poker face. So we <laughs> yes, <laughs> and we we don't show our expressions. That my God, what they said. What is this? We don't show that. We don't we don't let our shoulders get stiff. We don't do at all because just, just as much. I saw we are watching their body language. Yes. They're watching us. It, it took it took me some to time. It took me some time to work through that when I when I just started out in ministry because <laughs> I can tell you, I I heard some things in my office and I'm one of yes. those persons who oh, yeah. my my face tells a story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I really had to work through that. Uh, yeah, it's important to do so. It's not easy, but it's important and imperative to do so if it is that we want to continue having a great relationship with our clients and mm -hmm. if it is that in not even not only our clients but anybody it is that we're trying to help in navigating something that they're going through whether it is you know heartbreak yeah. whether it that's is, true that's true whatever it is yeah can you share some personal antidotes or examples of sometimes when you have witnessed the power of presence and support in healing broken hearts I remember one of the the things that I went through early as a minister, and 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 this is where I learned the power of presence. When I graduated from university, um, just a few months after I left university, I went to a church in Clarendon here in Jamaica, and I lost three members in an accident. Oh wow. Uh, a father, mother, and the daughter. And the son, oh, wow. the son was the only one that survived. Oh wow! And I remember, as a young minister, fresh out of college, I was wondering how do I handle this crisis. Hey. And I remember going to that particular house with that family, and I remember sitting about half the night with the family. Mm -hmm. saying absolutely nothing at nothing. all we were just yeah. there Beautiful. we were just in the house nothing was said and i remember a few years after that i remember um one of the family members came to me and said brother blake you don't know what you did for us and for me i didn't do anything all i would do was i was there that's but that's what you did you <laughs> were there but she said that's you don't what you know did. what you did and, and 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 I speak a lot in my my own ministry about the power of presence because I know what yes. it does. Right. Yes. Um. We one of the things I think we should avoid many times, even we are Bible believers and we know we support the Bible and everything, but not every scripture that is that is written in the Bible is for comfort. Woo! 
Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and it's gonna that's gonna go above a lot of people's heads. <laughs> yeah, so no, you're no. going to have to say that again for us and explain. Not 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 every that. Bible verse in the in the Bible is written for a, a source of comfort. Especially when persons are going through a crisis and most times they run to the Psalms, hoping that the Psalms will comfort them. And we give, we use some cliche statements, the Lord mm. gives and the Lord the takes, Lord away. takes away. Oh, it was we tell time. people all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. They're in a better place. You're, they're in a better place. Um, God knows what will happen. You know, God knows. I, I, in my experience, my humble experience, when persons are going through difficult times, they don't want to hear those things. Nope, not at all. Not at all. They have no interest in hearing how comforting you, you, you think your words are. And that's why, again, I go back to the power of presence. We must be comfortable being present without having right. to say anything. And if we are going to say something, make sure that, you know, the Bible says, let your speech be seasoned with salt. And, and I've often told people that the, if you say something in your head and it doesn't sound good in your head, Don't say then it alone that will make it sound any better. <laughs> so, you know, being present and, and offering support. You know, when Jesus was on the cross, and you know he he entrusted his the care of his mother to his disciple John, and Jesus here demonstrated the, you know the support and presence even in the midst of something that he was going through personally, and so he he knew that John would be present to take care of his mother, and so a part a part of what we do in terms of caring again, is that we must establish a level of trust. People have to be able to trust us. Yes. That, that is important, right? Have to be able to trust us, have to be able to, you know, trust us to bring them comfort and healing when they are going through crisis. So I, yeah. I advise persons, you know, I, I have many, many persons. I mean, I have I have been through, um, I probably have done more than 200 funerals to date since I've been in ministry. Oh. And I know what the power of presence is. And I know... Yeah. That when persons are going through crisis, many times the less that you say, it's the better Aye. for them. Less is more. Yes, less is more. One, I like that statement. Less is more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Less is more. Yes, is more. You know, this conversation brings to light that there are time there. We really don't know how to comfort people. That's such a truth. Yeah. Um, it's something that we ought to learn, whether it, it doesn't matter how small or minute or, you know, we think a situation is. The importance of just being there for someone with, or without even projecting our feelings or projecting our thoughts on them yes. is important and it's vital. It's important to ensure that the people who we're trying to comfort or be there for her understand that they are being heard and they are safe. That's right. Very important. Very important. Very, very important. And it is also important that we ourselves don't try and comfort people. And while comforting people, we're saying, you know, we're saying the wrong things. Don't yes. say the wrong things to people. Most times, people, people who are grieving don't have time to buy food. Go buy food for them and carry coins with them. Clean the house. Clean the house. <laughs> Nobody wants Speak flowers. Up. Flowers can't Pick up the children. Pick anybody. up the children at school. school. Yeah. You know, in that, that, that same situation I told her when I when I lost the three members, I remember um when while I was on the whole on the way to going to the house the day, I realized that the, the um lady I was going to had forgotten to pick up her children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was in the middle of this crisis and she totally forgot to pick up her children. Yep. And and I had I had to call and ask her, have you picked up the kids? And this was when when I asked her, she said, Boy, imagine I didn't even remember to pick them up. So I went and picked them up for her. That's right. Those are things that people need. And those are the things that make a difference. It makes a difference. Flowers, it, it dies. Nobody yes. wants flowers. It, it's not going to help them to eat. We have to be practical in how we care for people and how we are being there to come. Very true. Very true. Yes. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, all right. So I want you to tell the audience 
the last thing to tell the audience how to be there and if it is that there are resources to help them to know how to be there for people who are going through something whether it's relationship whether it's it's um crisis whatever it is can you just give the audience a last word on how to be there for people and if there are resources that they can check out the the first place i'd go is whenever we think of care I want us to look at the heart of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very good place to start. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus gives a wonderful discourse in the book of Matthew when he mentioned the fact that I I was hungry and thirsty and naked mm -hmm. and in prison. Mm -hmm. And you came and, and, and you did all of this to me. And yep. the question was asked, when did we do this to you, Lord? Mm -hmm. Says, as much as you have done this to one, you have also that's done it to me. Yes. I think that's a very good place to start. Whenever we think of care, look at the heart of Jesus. I, you know, with the cliche statement, what would Jesus do? But this is very, it's very applicable in this, in this context. Yes. How, how would Jesus go about caring for, for, for persons who are entrusted to him? Because I think that's another thing that we miss. The persons who we care for are persons who are entrusted to us. And so we need to look at how would Jesus respond to them. And also, flip. let us flip the script also. If I were in a crisis, how would I want somebody to respond to me? Because we all know how we want persons to respond to us. But oftentimes we forget how we should respond to persons. And I think that's a very, very good place to start. Look at what is happening in the church. How do we care for persons who are going through crisis in the church? And there's not a church without a crisis. Every church has a crisis. Yes, yes. Right? And so let us, let us stop looking outside of ourselves and passing off our God-given duties to somebody else. Because what, in, in the book that I'm writing, one of the things that I, that I emphasize is that the, the ministry of caring is not for is not for leadership. It's not for the minister. The minister of the ministry of care is for everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we must care for persons, understanding that one day we are going to have to deal with our own crisis. And so mm -hmm. it, it is it is prudent upon us to learn how to care for others before we need to be cared for. Right. Pastor Blake, where is it that we can find you? Ah, you can find me on you can, <laughs> you can find me on LinkedIn on the words to inspire J A. Mm -hmm. You can find me on on Facebook. I'm on Facebook, Paul Blake at words words to inspire J A. Also, mm -hmm. I am on Instagram, words to inspire J A. Mm -hmm. um, just about anywhere on Google, you'll find me. <laughs> <laughs> love I'm, love there. Love I'm, love I'm on I'm on WhatsApp. You know, I can leave a WhatsApp number if you want. Somebody wants to contact me. I'm on WhatsApp too. Go right uh, ahead. I, I, I can can I leave them a number there? If you want to go ahead, that's you. Yeah, I am on my my number eight three five eight seven six eight three five six five two four. That's that's my number, and you can WhatsApp me. Boundaries, guys. Boundaries. Yeah. So let's also remember boundaries. So yeah, that well, that 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 I, I have I have two numbers. That's the that's that one I use for business. That one is turned off at seven o'clock every night. Very good, very good. Because <laughs> <laughs> people take advantage of it, especially when it comes to pastors. People yeah, man. That, no, that one goes off seven o'clock every night. I, I I don't even have to touch it. Every night seven o'clock it goes off. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pastor Blake, for this conversation. It was fun. You are most the welcome. Topic, it was fun. It was light. It was really good. You are most welcome. Mm -hmm. And thank you to my listeners for continuing to listen to The Unfiltered by Jade. And we'll be back next week, Tuesday. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh.